Oh, thank you very much indeed. I hope you can hear me well. Well, first of all, first of all, we would like to start by thanking the organizers for having invited us in a congress that should be a point of reference. Guillaume talked about the fact that five years ago we met here in a much smaller room on the other side of the barrier to start talking about arts in health. A number of museums and people and, and professionals, we were all so happy. We work in health. And we realized all of a sudden that there was a new gaze, a new way of looking at projects, many from Canada and, um, and the, the National Catalonian Museum at Val de Brun. In order to work this new perspective, we were missing a crucial part of the point of the issue. Museums on their own cannot do it all. Fine. So, based on that event, which was held here five years ago, we had the birth of one of the most interesting initiative actions these years, which is this group, this Museums and Health Committee led by the Catalonian government, the Ministry of Museums at the Catalonian Health Institute, and it actually pulled together a number of equipment and professionals who had this sensitivity and who had this idea about health health beyond a condition, probably, but by including as well, as I've said beforehand, new gazes. At the time, the museum's service had the idea of involving the network of Catalonian arts museums. There are two museums, the one in Ampuda and the one in Cerdanyola, who are qu quite related to each other. We are, have high motivation in uh, the north, it's because of the wind, and in Cerdanyola, we have no excuse. And we started these experiences that we want to share with you here today. One experience that we mentioned with Christina, it's work in progress. We're working on it and we are continuously doing self-assessment. We're continuously learning with this new knowledge that's generated and that we want to share with you. That's why I wanted to share this image of this museum, the Museum of Light, this art, Catalonian Art Nouveau Museum about arts in health. What have, we, what have we done in the last few years? Okay, let me do an ad. What's the Arts Museum in Cerdanyola? It's a uh, Catalonian Art Nouveau jewel. And let me actually place it in the map of Catalonian Arts Museum. But museums are just are much more than just a box filled with art pieces. While listening to the regional government speaker, art is a right like education and health. And we are museums are spaces for thought. We are constantly learning. We're constantly thinking, and we are building up culture and society based on the pieces and the Arts Museum and taking advantage of this magical quality that art has on ours and to look at ourselves in our contemporary world. I mean, museums work for society. We are social. We have always been so. And if museums do not talk about us, about human beings, we're not doing something well. The Sardanyola Museum started working on the health issue, this large universe precisely here at the MNAC, the Catalonian National Art Museum. And based on Ishmael Smith, a few years ago when the MNACA devoted a large show about Catalonian art, at Sir Daniola we worked on this marginal issue. This, I mean, I mean Smith, who was actually, who was doomed because of his homosexuality, his Jewish, his Jewishness and his mental problems. So we started at the, at the Sardinella Museum and based on this, we started carrying out a paradigm change, a paradigm change that has brought us where we are now to develop projects like arts and well-being. Next Sunday, Elisa Grau will make a well-being, a well-being activity at the museum that will allow us to work some of the live arts. But it's a well-being project addressed to everybody, 
sensorial visits as well out of this, which were born due to the cooperation with Lourdes Lopetegui. And we had actually this visit amongst women who are harassed women, victims of male violence. I mean, all of these projects that will be mentioned during the next two days, all of this converges in this project about arts in health. This new gaze, this new outlook we have, and that has brought us this mosaic. Oh, thanks for the water, because I'm going to lose my voice in a second. So right now, we are at this panel of the Catalonian government with Sir Daniola Cordedeo and Empuda Museums, the canaletas from Sir Daniola case. And out of here, we have a whole work team with the General Ited, Guillaume de Fad, Lara Bourgeau, the Museum Services, Sonia Blasco, Janina Berthosa, on the primary health care part. Christina will talk about it and on the museum side. By defining a health goal and working together both disciplines to generate knowledge and to have a convergence between both disciplines. After that, we started the project, and now I'm going to give the floor to Christina. She will explain how this is being developed at the primary care center, how we meet, and what is the problem that has been spotted based on Sir Daniola's reality as a municipality, and how we started working out these needs. Christina, you have the floor. Hello, good morning. Well, in principle, we explain, we, we have come here to explain the pilot project. I mean, if we hadn't had the pandemic, we would be talking about different results. But right now, we will explain the current situation we find ourselves in. I have to say that we started in 2009 together with the Sir Daniela Oz Museum. We were very enthusiastic when they talked about working on this pilot project. We were the community group. We are working normally at the center, and we had to try and carry out this project. The initial proposal was to work just as we do now. We knew that we wanted to work with teenagers. At the time, the teenagers who had TDAH, I mean, deficit attention trend, uh, disorder, an attention deficit disorder, and we worked on prevention, but we didn't do anything at a community level. And we wanted to work with the vehicle, which was the Sardin Yola Arts Museum, to give them tools so that we knew how, so that they learn how to concentrate on consciousness and socialization. What happened? Well, the pandemic actually burst out, and we had to stop all of that. And then last year, when we started rethinking about the project, we thought that we had a change of scenario. There were different realities we had to face. The pandemic had affected very much teenagers. But teenagers, when they are very young, they come from they come to primary care centers for a review with their parents. But when they are older, they stop coming to our primary care center until they come to the becoming adults and they have problems at the Catalanta Center where we work normally, we saw an increase in substance abuse. They smoked more marijuana, anxiety problems, isolation problems, food disorders, and other problems. Um, I mean, we are talking about mental disorders, but it could all go beyond. Any teenager who comes to us, well, you have to think he or she is not feeling well. And it, he or she may express it clearly, or it may be perceived. Another opportunity to head is with the inclusion of a new professionals. The emotional well-being reference, in our case, is the nutrition expert who brought about an expertise field when we talk about needs and realities. They are able to create contents and a script to be followed, and they are fully oriented towards the community. They are fully community-centered for the prevention and promotion of health. And finally, 
we have the Arts Museum in Serdanyola, which is an expert when it comes to teenagers, especially with regards to the body and the image. And that's what we chose. The body is my enemy. Because that was the proposal to carry out a health intervention that would be carried out at the Serdanyola Oz Museum within the walls of the museum, but also outside of the walls with a target group, which are teenagers and with a mission, body and image. Teenagers are in a transition period from uh, childhood to the to adulthood. And the physical and biological changes are important, but also the emotional and mental evolutions are very important. And with that change, we want to help them by giving them tools. And that's why the action undertaken is at a biopsychosocial level and also for the promotion of health. Subject matters between 14 and 16, self-image, self-perception, nutrition, substance abuse, the importance of sports, and resting hours. The current situation we find ourselves in the project. We already have a project with sessions, the assessment, how we will do it, and all of the indicators. And we are recruiting people at the Canaletas Primary Care Center. 15 teenagers in a control group and 15 for this. And during the second part of the control group will become the case to actually the evaluation will be done at the beginning and at the end with emotional well-being questionnaires self-perception questionnaires and also nutrition questionnaires and we want to insist on this it is an action that's carried out at the health center based on health needs and the vehicle are the most important part for the creation and to give it all of the content to what we are asking is the museum. This is the most important part. And finally, I want to say, well, the importance of primary care centers. And, and I'm going to talk about my book now. Okay, well, the f we are the first link with the population. Everybody has the primary care center as a point of reference. That's where they come to talk to us about their life problems. And we have to act as a bridge for the community. The health center is not a, the early primary care center community center, they all share the fact that they want to promote health. And we want this project that is going to be evaluated and assessed with indicators. It should be evidence-based with the benefits and it should be included as another health tool and it can be prescribed from any primary care center in Catalonia. I'd like to express that what's most important about all of this is how all of these professional outlooks are converging. And the museum's team, the Canaletas team and Laura Bouchade are working jointly with New Profiles and Sergi Blancafort will be working on this process, this continuous assessment. And we are generating knowledge and we are all co-creating. This is what was said at the beginning. So, these sessions that she has defined have been defined by the primary care center. Eight sessions, the presentation, the introduction, the perception of the body. We need to be perfect. What's happening to us? How do we feel? The general perspective, assertiveness, efficacy, psychonutrition. We are what we eat in all of these sessions which are defined by the primary care centers professionals based on the needs or uh, give, given that health goal. The cultural professionals, we are experts in uh, cultural mediators and the artwork as this asset that can help us. And then we go to the next step. And that's the process we find ourselves immersed in. And we have this new profile. Now, now we need to generate these projects. We need to design these new health cultural projects. And with Emil Mateos, which is a wonderful profile. He's an art historian and he's also a nurse assistant. She is the perfect mediator to carry out these projects. And that's what we are using as a platform for construction. This is teamwork through two disciplines that converge and they 
enrich themselves mutually with specific knowledge. It's the first time in a museum in which we see professionals who come to offer and to work together to share their knowledge. And they are fully complementary, feasible and replicable projects. And this brings us to the conclusion we want to draw. The museum's goal has always been social and community based. Art talks about people. That's a great power that we want to use. And we want to be used. And this is what's happening. This double fold way of health and art. When we work with arts in health, it is necessary. It's crucial to have this dual way from both disciplines. And we're having this co-creation. The fact that we're having this co-creation is one of the most relevant points, this intersectional perspective. There are new profiles being born that we could have not imagined. And it's wonderful to talk about health without forgetting <laughs> the condition. And we will end with this two slide. Art, as I've said, is a magical element. It is a reference. It's diversity. It's a thinking element that should allow us to make headway in society. And museums are enormous, big connectors and platforms. That's why I insisted beforehand on the fact that you should use it. All of us. And if there is something that makes us move is the social responsibility we have. And this last slide is about all of the things I've mentioned with anxiety groups and people who are victims of male chauvinistic victims. Museums are a shelter. We are we have elements in which we can carry on many of these cultural socialization actions with mediation tools that have been scientifically proved. As Christina has said, there is clear and evident benefits. It's a time in which you disconnect and you devote yourself to yourself. We're constantly being stimulated. And if there is something that art and museums help us is because you're doing something for yourself and because art somehow is an imitation of life and it prepares you for life. Fine, so we will end our presentation above all by thanking this convergence. It's a unique moment in which we have an institution, we have the government of Catalonia that's investing with great efforts and in which disciplines that are not confronting each other, but we are we were very separated. We're working together. We're very close to each other with a clear goal, which is the same one we have which is to serve society. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.